Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How many are thankful to be in the house today? So thankful, so grateful. I know it may be a rainy day, maybe like kind of like snuggle up, reading a book kind of weather, you know, just kind of want to stay home and maybe watch a movie, do something family friendly. And I know that's what I would do. But today we've drove through the rain, through the weather, and we're here to worship God. Out of all else, we've come to praise His name and lift Him up this morning, for He is great and greatly to be praised. Why don't we stand this morning and usher in the presence of the Lord with prayer? And this morning, with our special speaker coming in tonight, I just want this atmosphere to be so worshipful. For we, we need to come in reminded of who God is and what He's done for us this morning. And with that in mind, we need to let everything go and just release a powerful praise and worship to God who is more than able. Anybody agree with me this morning? Why don't we lift our hands and pray this morning? Lord Jesus, we ask that your presence be in this place. Let us come in reminded of who you are and what you have done. Let us come in with a worshipful mind, coming in praising you with everything we have forgetting about all of our struggles, all of our worries, and just coming in ready to praise and glorify the most matchless name of Jesus. And we praise your holy name today. Oh, we ask in your most great name of Jesus. And the church said amen. Shout it one more time, amen. You may be seated if you so choose, but this is the day that the Lord has made. day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it.
just rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise your name today, Jesus. We ask for your forgiveness today, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Everything we ask or even think we know that you can do. So I'm going to sing unto you. Sing praises unto our God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord and bless his holy name. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Well, I will sing unto the Lord and bless his holy name. You are victorious, you are mighty, you are omnipotent, there is none that can compare, I've come to bless your name. I will sing unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord, and bless his holy name. Sing unto the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord, and bless His holy name. You are holy, you are righteous, you are magnificent, you are victorious, you are mighty, you are omnipotent, there is none that can compare. I've come to bless your name. You are holy, you are righteous, well, you are magnificent, you are victorious, you are mighty, you are omnipotent, there is none that can compare. I've come to bless your name. Bless his name, bless his name, let everybody come and bless his name. Bless his name, let everybody come in. Bless his name, well, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Bless his name. let everybody come in. Bless his name, well, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. let everybody come in. Bless his name, you are holy, you are righteous, you are magnificent, you are victorious, you are mighty. You are omnipotent, there is none that can compare, I've come to bless your name. Bless his name, bless his name, well, let everybody come and bless his name. go through this entire church over and over again telling of the good works of Jesus from the lowest part of our lives to the highest mountain of our lives we can go through and thank him for who he is we can bless him for who he is for he is wonderful in all his ways oh hallelujah and I'm so thankful I can come into the house and give God praise and exalt his name oh hallelujah Jesus we are so thankful, so thankful.
God we serve. We're so excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. If you could stand with me. I do want to take our needs before the Lord. Uh, but I think it would be important that we acknowledge the fact that sweet sister Blackford is back there and joining us. 
We miss you. And uh, so glad to have you in church this morning. We love you. Amen. The family of Sister Tiffany Clark has a special unspoken. And also the father-in-law of Fred Francis, which is Sister Sheila's brother, is in the ICU in critical condition. So please remember Fred Francis this morning. Every special unspoken, so many needs in this place, but we know a God who's able. Let's go before him this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to be in your house today. I pray, God, Lord, whatever the need is, that you would bring peace and comfort right now. Lord, if it's a situation of healing, we know that you're still in the healing business. I pray this morning that you would bring hope, that you would bring peace, that you would bring healing and restoration. Lord, I pray that this prayer would be the beginning of a mighty testimony. Increase our faith today, oh God. Help us, Lord, to put our trust and care in you. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. to Jesus. Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name as our ushers come. do want to remind you that Brother Holly will be with us tonight at 6.30. So come, invite somebody, and come expecting a mighty move of the Lord. Uh, Monday is ladies' prayer at 6.30. Tuesday is men's prayer at 7. Of course, we have Wednesday Bible study and kids' power hour. Friday, we have the Sunday School Game Night from 6.30 to 8.30. And Saturday, we have under construction from 11 to 1, and then the ladies' dinner from 5 to 7. So we got a full week. Amen. But that's okay. We love being together, right? Praise the Lord. Let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to give to your kingdom. We pray that you would bless it, multiply it, help us to reach this lost world. In Jesus' name, amen.
hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy of all praise and adoration. We magnify you today. Will everybody say praise the Lord? I guess we have to say on a day like this as well, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I woke up this morning and uh, you know how this seasonal stuff does, my head, uh, my ears ringing, uh, my head's congested and all that good stuff, uh, but uh, I'd much rather have this than snow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I did say when it started last night, if this was snow instead of rain, I think we'd have been in trouble today. Praise God. Galatians, the third chapter, if you will, this morning, as well as James, the second chapter. So good to see you all here today. And we're excited what the Lord is doing. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, everybody's talking about getting their shots and, and uh, all that good stuff. So I'm glad you're getting your shot. How many's got their shot yet? How many hasn't got their shot yet? Amen. So, to those, Brother Rex, two, Rex, two, Brother Rex Howard the second told me he got his second shot, and uh, he didn't tell me all the details, but I guess it's a bigger needle and it hurt. So, how many likes needles? I don't like needles, so if they hurt me, I might punch them. I don't know. You stick me, I hit you. <laughs> That's what I felt like doing the last time a lady took my blood. I'm going I'm I'm to scout it out this time. I'm going to probably ask a question. Who's doing the blood taking this time? No, nah, she was a sweet person. Just couldn't find a blood vessel. Praise God. Well, somebody say amen. This too shall pass. And I'm waiting for it. I'm longing for it. So everybody can get back in the house of God and feel comfortable and uh, because that's what it's all about. Amen. My friend is back in the hospital. Brother Mark Albury, please say a prayer for him. Uh, he's struggling with pneumonia and they had to take him back in. And so uh, uh, with all his things that he's been going through health-wise, just say a prayer for him. Praise God. Galatians 3.9. So then they which be of faith. Everybody say, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Moving over to James, the second chapter, verse 17 to 18. <clears throat> 17 to 18, it says, Even so faith, everybody say faith. If it hath not works, everybody say works. It says what? It's dead. Being alone. Everybody say being by itself. Verse 18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show ye thee my faith by my works. Amen. I believe that this morning. You know, I believe that, that uh, you don't just get one, you need them both to equal out what God wants to do. And I want to talk about that a little bit this morning. And I hope maybe we can spark a little bit of faith in here today. Not just faith, but also works. Amen, because I believe it's time to get our hands dirty. Amen, get down to the nitty gritty in the, in, in, the, in the world today for the kingdom of God. Amen, so that souls can be saved, right? Lives can be changed, right? Amen, and, and, and most of all, so that we will grow in God. God, we thank you today for your goodness, your mercy, your love and kindness. Thank you for touching our lives. Thank you for this opportunity again to be here. And uh, Lord, every song that was sung this morning, Amen. Every hand that was lifted, every voice that was lifted unto you, I pray that you receive it, Lord. Amen. Because truly, amen, we want to be an incense that is a good smelling savor. Amen. That comes before you, Lord. Touch us today, I pray. Let your anointing rest upon us. Let your word be blessed today. In your wonderful name we pray. And everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. And so... <clears throat> There's an equation that, that we've seen played out here in the scripture uh, 
this morning that I believe can and will change our lives. Amen. I, I really do if we follow it. It talks about faith. It talks about works. Amen. And I think that equals miracles. Praise God. No faith, but you got works. It's alone. Right? Everybody say it's alone. Amen. Faith uh, without the works, it's alone. You're not going to have anything. Nothing's going to happen. So if you want God to move in your life in a new way, uh, then uh, uh, we have to build or have to be willing to do some new things uh, for God uh, and allow Him to do new things in our life. And so our blessing uh, isn't dependent on God because He's promised, right? Everybody say He's promised. That the faithful will be blessed. The faithful will be blessed. And that faith without works, he says, is dead. The faithful will be blessed, but though the, you know, faith without works is dead. So if you faithfully follow his instructions, see, we have a problem doing that sometimes. We talk about that often. The instructions are very important. Amen. But if you follow the instructions, the instructions will tell you how to proceed and what to do, and then the miracles will come, right? <clears throat> Amen. So uh, two things are necessary to produce a change. You have to have, number one, you have to have the information. Information. The second thing that's just important is you got to have the application. You can have the information and not apply it and not get anywhere. Information, application. Amen. That's why we read the Word. You don't just read the Word to read the Word. No. You read the Word and then apply it. Right? Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. So, so uh, uh, you know, uh, you got the information, the application, and, 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 and uh, a lot of us know that doing the same things, you know the whole thing, doing the same things, uh, you know, if you do the same thing the same way, you're going to always get what you always got. Amen. It's just going to produce the same results. And that, that, that means doing new things will result in new things or new results. Right? We ought not be afraid of doing something new in the kingdom of God. But, but Pastor, you don't understand. This is the way we've done it for the last 75 years. And it's, uh, you know, this is the way we've always done it. And this is how it is. And da, 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 da. Well, you know, sometimes, you know, you get stuck in the mud. Amen. I don't know about you, if I get stuck in the mud, I just don't accept the fact that I'm stuck in the mud and say, well, I'm stuck in the mud, so it looks like I'm going to be stuck in the mud. Right? No. You're going to do whatever you can to get out of that. So let, let's, let, let's, let's look at the, some practical things today, uh, some things, some practical examples and, and, uh, here today and see, see if we can't get help in this area. How many of you, how many, of you, how many here today has ever flown on an airplane? I have. All right, so we've had several fly on airplane. Some of you that haven't, how many has not flown on an airplane? All right, Sister Mary, we got you. All right, Sister Sheila. All right, if somebody would pay you to go fly on an airplane, would you? <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. You're my example today. Amen, amen. So, so uh, uh, but usually, you know, somebody, if they, if they pay you, uh, you, you would jump on that plane to go to somewhere different. Amen. But did you know that if someone didn't decide to do things differently, uh, we might not have had airplanes today, right? Right? Come on. How many's ever heard of Oroville and Wilbur Wright? Now, I, I don't want to go deep in this because I think everybody's pretty much heard of them. And uh, they, were, they were two uh, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, venturous uh, guys. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, were courageous uh, and... Um, and produced uh, never-before-seen results on 17th of December, uh, 1903. It was the first powered and controlled flight. How many have ever seen those little videos? Or if you went to Wright Patton, you see uh, uh, all the little things that they have for that. And so you had Charles Dolphus, a man who had lived during, uh, lived, uh, during Orville and Wilbur Wright's era, made this statement. He said this, It is therefore incontestably, the Wright brothers alone who resolved in its entry. The problem of human mechanic flight, men of genius exact 
in their reasoning, hard workers, outstanding experimenters, and unselfish. They changed the face of the globe. So do you think we could learn anything spiritually from these two brothers uh, today? Amen. Just a little bit. I don't want to bear. I just want to kind of set a little foundation here uh, about, uh, to, uh, about how you approach things. Amen. Sometimes things look insurmountable. Some things the obstacle looks too big. Some things people will tell you can never be done. Some people will look and say, and say to you, you are crazy. You are nuts. You need to be in the, uh, the loony uh, bin. You need to be uh, locked up. You need to be on uh, 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 the third floor. You need to believe. Be, this is what people will say when you start stepping out in faith and believe in God for greater things. Come on now. Somebody say praise the Lord. And in our own human nature, we don't want to be uh, uh, in the limelight or in the firing line, so to speak, with that. So we have a tendency to kind of step back, lower, disengage. We don't want people to think of us this way. But the Wright brothers had a vision of doing things very differently. <clears throat> the question is, do we? Do we have vision doing something different uh, than just having church as usual? Amen. Do we envision worshiping uh, our God in spirit and in truth? Do we envision uh, reaching the lost at any cost? Because see, to do that, you have to step out. Amen. Everybody say, I got to step out. Yeah, you got to step out. If you don't step out, you're not going to get the results that you're anticipating. So it takes not just your works, but it takes your faith. Faith is what causes you to take that step because sometimes you're taking it into the world of the unknown. You don't know what, what's going to, you don't know what's going to be under your foot when you take that step. Amen. And so the Wright brothers made the decision that it was time to do things differently, not just the way we've always done it, but now it's time to do some things a little different. And, and, and so some of us have been stuck in that rut for too long. And I, and I just, I'm just encouraging us today. It's time to get out of that rut. It's time to get out of that same old, same old. It's time to get out of that place that we feel like it's a grave with the, both ends kicked out. It's time for us to realize that, you know what, hey, I can do something about this. I can make, a, I can make the situation better. I can make it happen. Amen. You see, through Christ, we have the ability. Through Christ, we are, the Bible says, more than conquerors. Amen. And through the anointing and by the anointing, God can use us, use you, use myself, use the one sitting next to you and front and back of you, uh, amen, to exact change, to, to bring change uh, into the lives of people and also bring change to us. Amen. God has chosen us to bring about spiritual change. I believe in our family, our friends, our city, our workplace, our area. I believe that's what God wants us to do. Amen. And just like these two brothers, do we have anybody that's willing to, to, to act and say, yes, pastor, uh, amen, I, wa I want to I do what God wants me to do. Amen. You know the expression, there are three kinds of people in this world, those that are ignorant. Amen. They're ignorant of what's going on. How many know somebody that's that way? Amen. Do you know their name? Don't say it today. But there are three kinds of people. Those that, those, uh, that are uh, ignorant of what's happening. Those who uh, just stand by and watch it happen. I don't know which is worse. The ones that are ignorant or the ones that sit there and see it happening and don't do nothing. But then you got the third, the third group of people, and these are the ones, you know, that make things happen. In other words, they're not going to sit there and watch, and they're not going to be ignorant about it, but they're going to roll up their sleeves, they're going to take that step of faith, they're going to put works with it, and they're going to see something good come about. Right? Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. you got to be determined never to give up. No matter what comes by your way, you got to say, no, you know, you say it can't happen. Amen. We're putting our mind to it, and we're going to see it come to pass. Oh, come on. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody had to believe. 
So now you can get on a plane. You can take a trip to Florida in two hours and 10 minutes or 15 minutes. You can be down there in the sunshine. Otherwise, if it would have been up to a lot of people, we would have still been doing horse and buggy. There had to be somebody that would believe that it was possible. No, nobody had done it before, but they were believing that they could fix it and work with it and be challenged by the project and then work on making it happen. But you gotta, you got to stay with it. Come on. Everybody say, i got to stay with it. i got to work at it. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, we got to work hard at this. It doesn't matter what we're facing this morning. doesn't matter. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Doesn't matter. I don't see the sunshine. I, don't, I may not see the sunshine, but I know it's there. I may not see the moon, but I know it's there. I may not see the stars, but I know it's there. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you're facing this morning uh, or how bleak or how bad it is. Uh, amen. You've got to have the ability to determine that you're not going to quit. Come on. Everybody say it with me. I'm not going to quit. Come on, shout it real loud. I'm not going to quit. Amen. I'm not going to quit. And come on. And you know, sometimes I feel like if I'm going to spit on somebody, I'll just put my mask on and I'm going to scream it. I'm not going to quit. Now I didn't get nobody. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. Come on. Amen. Say it. I'm not going to stop. You know, the devil might turn us around, but I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to turn right back around. The devil might push me over, but I'm going to get back up again. The enemy might target me, but I'm going to start moving. Amen. So they were ready to do whatever was necessary to achieve their vision. Look, folks, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not some uber intellectual. Amen. But I'll tell you this right now. Amen. We are living in a day and time to where we're either going to make up our mind and we're going to make it or we're going to get sidetracked and we're going to miss it. Listen to me this morning. You got to make up in your mind that this can be a done. You can accomplish this. Amen. You can make it. Come on. How many believes that this morning? Throw up both your hands if you believe that. I believe that. I can, I can accomplish this. I, I can make this. This can happen in my life. Amen. I'm going to put this together. Amen. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to apply the faith of it. And I'm going to see God do something great. Oh, clap your hands and praise Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to take work. You've got to be willing to do whatever's necessary to achieve it. Amen. What does that mean for us? How do we apply that? How do we apply that to our life today? Well, you got to. We, we have to pick up our cross. <laughs> uh, oh, that's too painful, Pastor. <laughs> do you want to achieve? Do you want to achieve heaven? Do you want? Do you want to achieve what you want to do spiritually in God? You got to pick up that cross. What else did he say? You got to deny yourself. Right? You got to deny yourself. Amen. You got to pick up the cross. What's the third thing he said? And follow him. You see, you want to be a Christian? You want to be what God wants you to be? You got to, you got to take up your cross. You got to deny yourself. You got to follow him. See, see, here's the deal. Take up your cross. Well, they out the others. It's alone. Amen? Right? Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. And a lot, a lot of people followed him, but, but in the end, that wasn't enough. Amen? You can deny, anybody can deny yourself. I know weightlifters and everybody else, they can deny themselves food, they can deny themselves a lot of things, and they do it for a total different reason. Uh, amen. So really it's not accomplishing anything spiritually. So you can even fast, just to say you fasted, and it may not do your squat. You might as well eat a cheeseburger. Come on. And so understanding that you need to put these things together, and I think you see it different times in the Word of God. You know, pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. And that's what, that, that's what makes you a fisher of men. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody said hallelujah. I'm getting a little too excited for a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, I'm getting a little too excited. Amen. I think Sunday morning needs to be exciting. Amen. I think it needs to be exciting. Amen, where we come together and realize that on a Sunday morning, on a rainy Sunday morning, we can have a move of God and God can do something in our lives before we ever leave this place. Why? Because we connected it. 
Amen. Are we willing to sacrifice? Are we willing to pray? Are we willing to fast? Are we willing to seek the Lord? Are we willing to put everything, all the ingredients together that need to be together for us to have a move of God? Amen. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want just Brother Greg to have a move of God. I want one too. Right? Amen. I don't want Brother Bobby and Sister Mary Faye to have a move of God. I, I want one too. I don't want, Sister, I don't want you to just have a move of God. Amen. Let's don't do it alone. Let's work on it. Amen. Let's let our face soar. Let's put our hands to work. And let's let God move in this place the way he desires to. Hallelujah. You know what's amazing? Sometimes I think you can fall from a tree higher than <laughs> higher than this plane flew for the first time. At least, at least it feels like that, right? Do you know, uh, you will get up, man, I have flown to Singapore and I purpose never to do it again. That was a long flight. That was long. It took me 21 hours to get there. You know, fly to New York, wait for five hours. Get on, fly seven to Frankfurt, Germany. Get off and wait another couple hours. Get back on and fly twi 12 hours to Singapore. Are you kidding me? In coach. Not first class. Not even business class. They scared you half to death with those prices. Coach. And it wore me out. I'm like, Elder, I said, I ain't never doing this again. You can call me till the cows come home. I'll pray for you. My prayer can get to you a lot quicker. But you can do. You can get on a plane and you can fly a lot of places in just a matter of hours. But it all started, notice this, it all started with a 12-second flight. Oh, what are you getting all hyped up for? Just 12 seconds? Look at that thing. It's, fl it's flopped all over the place. you got to fix it now. 12 seconds. Amazing. But to them it was like, hey, we're getting it. <laughs> Could you imagine what World War I, World War II would have been like without the, uh, the air power? Can you imagine where the word would be today if we didn't have technology and have what we had? Amen. Things done differently produce new results. Faith works. Miracles. Faith. 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 Just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just, 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 just use what you got. But you got to put works with it. If you're ever going to get a move of God... That's going to do something great. I don't feel like it, Pastor. You better get to feeling like it. We're living in the last days. God's going to come for his church. Amen. we got to be a, about the Father's business. we got to be in the harvest. Uh, amen. Doesn't matter what's going on in our life. Come on. we got to be. It don't matter. But push that to a side. It, it, it may hurt. It may be bothering you. Uh, but you got to say, I've got faith. Uh, amen. As a grain of mustard seed, I'm going to see uh, a move of God. I'm going to put myself to work in the field in the harvest so we can see miracles. Clap your hands and praise him this morning. I'm going to use this illustration in Matthew, the 14th chapter, just because I think we all kind of know it well. 14, 29 to 31, Jesus said, come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on water to go, to go to Jesus. But when Jesus saw the wind, it was boisterous. He was afraid and began to sink, and he cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt That's our human nature. Everything can be going great and all of a sudden the wind blows. Our mind gets off of the things of God and all of a sudden we begin to sink. Mm. You know, there's a, whole, there's a whole lot of people in that boat. Amen. Amen. You could be in that boat and be some of God's finest. But I wonder how many of us would get out of the boat. Because it's pretty obvious he was the only one that did. There is no account of somebody else as he stepped over and started walking on water and somebody else jumped out there and, and said, ah, oh, Peter's doing it, I'm going to do it too. Uh, no. No, they, they stood there, ground. They probably were still hanging on to the boat wondering what, what in the world is going on. There's a lot of people that will talk to talk but won't walk to walk. Remember faith. You know, I just, I just read something. I'm just going to throw this in there. I just read about somebody. I'm not going to mention their name. But they're a governor of a state. I'll go that far. And uh, they got caught in a restaurant that they closed down because of coronavirus. 
Second time that's happened. First time they were repenting and said, I'm sorry, it's not a good example. You know, da 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 and, and uh, smooth it over with that. But now the second time it's happened. And I'm thinking to my head, what aren't you getting? You're, you're, you're talking the talk, but you definitely ain't walking the walk. Amen. See that? And it triggered in my mind when I said, you know, we got a lot of people that are, that are, that are talking the talk, but they ain't walking the walk in the Christian faith. They talk a good game, but they're not living a good game. They got a lot to say about it, but they're not producing anything in their life. There's nothing that's going forth. Amen. That, 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 that's saying, yes, it can happen. And, and it's going to happen because I'm going to get involved in it. Hallelujah. Amen. You want green beans? You got to plant them. You don't just plant them and water them a little bit and walk away till some down the road. No. Then you got to get a hoe and you got to go out and keep the very thing out that will choke them out. It's called weeds. And let me tell you something this morning, not in my notes, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Amen. As a child of God, amen, you're growing in God's field. Amen. But don't think for one moment that the enemy is not going to come in and sow some things into your life to try to choke you out. No, you've got to be willing to say, God, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to see your will. There's going to be a harvest in my life. People who truly believe God's word many times are far and few between. So many say they do, but in truth, most of us are just like the disciples. We don't want to leave our comfort zone. We don't want to leave our comfort zone. How many know what God knows how to stir up our nest? Do you know that? Do you know God knows how to do that? Man, in that early church, I think in, in Jerusalem, they were all comfy right there in Jerusalem. And he says, nah, we're going to give a little thorns here. We're going to create a little persecution where y'all going to have to move on out and take this gospel with you. Come on. Amen. I don't want to get to the place where God says, you know what? I got to make you feel uncomfortable. Right? Come on. How many just wants to do it? It's like this. Let, let me put it to you this way. Amen. It's, it's, it's like when my dad says, take the garbage out. And I say, I'll get to it. I didn't think I said it in a bad way. I would get to it. But it wasn't an option to him that I was going to get to it. Why was it? Because the house was starting to stink. You know, you can only put so many eggshells and leftover membrane gooey stuff in the trash bin and other food particles that we love to smell, but if you leave them set too long, they're not going to be good. And so he says, hey, I need you to take the trash out. It's starting to stink. I'll get to it. Well, you know the rest of the story. I don't want to get shadow banned today by being too explicit. But the fact of it is, or simply this, is that he wasn't, that's not the answer he wanted. He wanted me to get the busy, get work right then, come in there. And, and, and folks, I'm going to tell you, all I had to do was pick it up and take it out. You know, a lot of times he had already picked it up and tied it. All I had to do was pick it up and go about 50 feet to the garbage and drop it. Just a little work so that everything would have been fine. You see, we got to get to the place right now to stop telling God some other time. Later on, at a more convenient season, I'll do this or I'll do that. Or I'll do something else. Because, friend, let me tell you, I just turned 61 uh, Friday, I think it was. No, yeah, yeah, right. Brother Mark, how old are you? You were a day after me. Yeah. So mine was Friday and yours was Saturday. All right, so let me tell you, that's what happens when you get older. But listen, when, you, when I, I turn my age, I'm telling you right now, it just seems like, Brother Bobby, it happened yesterday. You'll be there tomorrow. You'll be there tomorrow. Amen. And, and, and so the thing of it is, you all, most of you know what I'm talking about. Where has the last uh, 40 years or 50 years gone? 
Amen. And some of us, God's been trying to speak to us for many years now, 20, 30 years. And we keep saying another time, amen, on down the road, I'm too busy with work right now. I got too much going on. I'm raising a family. I'm this, I'm that, and everything else. And so we get all caught up in the cares of life. And we'll say, sometime later, I'll get to it. But we're not guaranteed for that sometime later. That's why right now, amen, we have faith for it. We'll believe, we'll cry, we'll pray, and we'll worship and all that kind of stuff. But we got to put our works with it uh, so that we can see the end result. The miracles, lives being changed. Oh, clap your hands and praise God this morning. You got to learn that leaving your comfort zone matters. How many know? Let me say to you, how many knows that God knows how to stir your nest up? <laughs> Amen. He got the attention of the disciples with a storm. So if you feel like you're in a storm today, let me tell you what. Quit, quit drowning in your storm. Get your eyes on the master. Cry out to the master. Have faith in him. Believe in him. Amen. Instead of, the, instead of you allowing yourself to, 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 to uh, flounder around in doubt and unbelief as the waves uh, come crashing over your ship, uh, amen, you feel like you're going down, uh, amen, you need to take a step of faith out of that boat and say, I'm going after the Lord. I'm believing in Him. I trust in God. The whole problem is we just won't get out of the boat. boat's our comfort zone. But it's sinking. It's my comfort zone. I don't have no water around my feet yet. Sometimes you got to trust God to get out of the boat. Come on, I don't, I don't care who we are today. I don't care, you know, what, what our name is. Amen. Sometimes your boat just needs to be rocked. Sometimes it just needs to be rocked. Come on, let's say it together right now. Everybody say, Lord, rock my boat. Now, honestly, did everybody say that? Lord, rock my boat. If I'm not, if I'm, if, if Lord, stir me up. In other words, Lord, stir me up. Lord, Lord, shake me up. Rattle my cage, Lord. Amen. Get me back on my, on the right track. Let my vision be in you. Let my faith be in you. Let my hope be in you. Let my trust be in you. See, during their, the disciples' calamity, Jesus came walking on the water. Amen. And uh, you see, things start changing when Jesus starts walking on water. How many knows the Lord's always on time? What's that song we sing? I, I don't think we sung it in a while, but he's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. One thing's for sure, if you don't step out of the boat, you'll never personally experience what the Lord has for you. Yeah, so, what, you know, look at Peter. What do you think he did? Do you think he ran to the front of the boat and, and, did, a, and did a high dive off? You know, how many times do you think in their life as fishermen that they dove off the boat into the water just to get a little cool break from the heat of the day? Do you think he just did that? I believe Peter lifted one leg. One leg, I think he said, okay, bid me come, Lord. He said, come on. I think Peter got to that side of that boat and he lifted one leg of faith because he said, you know what, here goes. I'm going to believe in his word. He said, come, I'm going to believe in his word. And so he put that one foot over the boat, at the bow of the boat, and he began to go, amen. And, 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 and all of a sudden, the other boat, the other, the, the other leg, the other, uh, as he lifted out of the bed, he lifted the other leg. What? So, so he had faith. He had faith. He could have stayed on that boat and just, just dabbled his foot in the water and felt like, oh, I'm close, I'm close. Ooh, I'm about to have a move of God. I'm about to have a move of God. But we're hanging on to that boat. We're sitting on the side of that boat. And we're dabbling. I'm going to have a move of God. Ooh, I can feel the water. I can feel the water. We're going to have a move of God. But ain't nothing going to happen until you get the other, other foot out of the boat. Your works, your faith, your works. If you want to see God do something great in your life, you got to realize that this is the way it's going to happen. <laughs> this is the way it's going to happen. We like our comfort zone, don't we? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you how much we like comfort. 
we all have a pillow that we like. Right? And we had it a long time. And all of a sudden, it gets to where it's just not what it used to be, and you'll puff it up, and you'll, you'll work with it, and, and all that. That's your pillow, man. That's, you know, you've got to have that pillow. Amen. That's the way I is. You know, let me tell you this, Sister Paula. Amen. When I go travel somewhere, except to Florida, because I'm not going to pay $90 to take my pillows to Florida. But when I travel somewhere, Elder, I take the pillow that I lay my head on, and I take another pillow, and I take a quilt. Those are the things I take with me religiously. I will leave stuff behind and buy them at a CVS somewhere else just to take those with me. That's my comfort. Everybody say comfort. You have your favorite pillow. How many's ever, how many's ever traveled somewhere and had to use another pillow? And you get up the next day and you say, this pillow was awful. I miss my pillow. It's your comfort zone. It's your comfort zone. We all have a comfort zone. Amen. But we got to take a step of faith sometimes. It come, becomes harder and harder to distinguish between the two sometimes, faith and works, because they start to become one. Amen. It's automatic. We begin to work on it. And i got to ask, what, what, what held Peter up? What kept him afloat? Did the water suddenly freeze? Did Jesus turn gravity off for Peter? He couldn't. He couldn't be. He, he would have floated away. So what held him up? Amen. It's the very same thing that's going to hold us up in perilous times. It's going to be faith. When everything is falling apart around us, there's something we can stand on. It's faith. And some of you know that personally. Amen. And somebody, I believe, uh, amen, today, I believe they need to hear this good news that no matter what is wrong, Jesus can fix it. But you got to apply the faith, you got to, you got to work, and you got to let God do the rest. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can we see faith? Can we, can we, uh, uh, can we, uh, uh, can we taste faith? Can we hold it? Can we smell it? So in this story, what is holding Peter up as he walks on the water? Water is a substance. Everybody say water is a substance. What is a substance? It's faith. Are you with me this morning? Is water a substance? Yes, it is. What is it made of? Well, we know it's made out of H2O, which we call water, a celestial or, or terrestrial substance. It's celestial. Is faith a substance? Well, Hebrews 11 1 says, what is it made of? Hope. Is faith celestial or terrestrial substance? A supernatural. It's terrestrial. So as you dig a little deeper, does water always react the same way, uh, uh, way to temperature? Does it freeze, boil at the same temperature? Does it always react the same way? How long has the substance been acting this way? Since the beginning of creation. Is there ever a time when water doesn't act the same way? That it's always acted. What about faith? Does it always produce the same results? How long has it been acting the same? Well, I'll tell you. Since before creation. Everybody say before creation. Is there ever a time when faith does not act that way? It is supposed to. Huh? Does it not? Has faith ever let man or woman of God down? So when water meets, we're talking about Peter now, when water meets his faith, does it act the way it's supposed to? Has faith ever let them down? When water meets faith, who wins? When our problems and our sicknesses meet faith, who wins? Faith works. I'm not even close to being done. So what do you want? We, want? we want God to work in new ways. But if we do, we have to be willing to do new things. Come on, church. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. So you get back to the story and you talk about Peter. Amen. Where was he walking? On water. Was he going to church? No. To work? No. 
He was going to Jesus. Come on, you got you to gotta, you gotta hear what I got to say this morning. Amen. If you're going to walk towards Jesus, I'm telling you what, anything can happen. Amen. If you're going to take a step of faith, uh, amen, toward your miracle, amen, you got to be willing to do it right now. You can't wait till tomorrow or next week. Uh, amen. You want something to happen? Uh, amen. You got to take that step of faith. Let me skip down to Psalms 86. Psalms 86, 7 says, In the day of trouble, he said, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. In the day of trouble, I'm going to call on you, God, because you'll answer me. Jeremiah 33, 3 says simply this, Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty, work, mighty things, which thou knowest not. Amen. Just call me. Just call me. Call on me. He said, I'll show you great and mighty things. Oh, man, does that excite you this morning? Hey Amen. God, God just said to Jeremiah, come on now, just call on me. Call on me. Call on me. Man, we'll have a, we'll have a great conversation. I'll show you great things. Hey Amen. Call on me. Have, you ever, have we ever done that really the way we should do it? Call on the name of the Lord. Hey Amen. Genesis 18, 14 says, is anything too hard for the Lord? As the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the same time, and Sarah shall have a son. Abraham, Sarah's going to have a baby. And she's in the tent going, ha, ha, ha. Ah, that's crazy. That's foolish. He said, well, how can she have a baby? I mean, she, you know, she's 90 years old. Come on, man. She, we're, we're old people right now. How can we have kids? He said, but next time I come around, she will have a child. Is there anything too hard for God? Come on. Is there anything too hard for God? Now, I know some of y'all ain't praying for that today, but, but is, is anything too hard for God? No. Everybody say No. The Bible says immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand when Peter was in trouble, caught him and, and said to him, O oh, thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? In other words, hey, Peter, you had it going. You connected. But what got your attention in the midst of it? Let's ask a question this morning. Would you, would you rather have a 911 operator or Jesus on the other end of the line? We, we are going to say we want Jesus on the other end of the line. We want that to happen, right? So why is Peter sinking? He was doing good. He applied to faith and the works, miracles and work. They were working. What happened to Peter is what happens to every one of us. Our doubt overcomes our faith. I'm not going to let that happen. Come on, folks. We've got to say we can't let that happen. You know what else doubt does? It magnifies the size and the force of the waves and the wind. Our doubt makes our obstacles and difficulties look bigger than they actually are. So what are we going to do? It's three minutes after 11 today, according to that clock up here. What are we going to do? What's more important to us? To approach the things of God? To take that step of faith? Apply some works to it? I believe there's a higher place to climb today. But I also understand that it takes a higher, it, it requires a higher le level of work. Amen. Does anybody, do, do, does any of us believe this today? Let's stand together. I'm going to quit. Amen. You see, Jesus moves on behalf of those who are willing to do things in a new way. And, and God made all things dependent on faith. And he said, if you have faith... You have all things. If we don't have faith, we have nothing. I'm hoping I'm encouraging you today because most, most Christians in our world today are not willing to allow the Lord to bring change into their lives because they are fearful that they're fearful of something new. Amen. But I'm telling you, if you want what God has for you, you've got to get rid of that fear and get rid of that doubt and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Remember what God told Abraham in the 12th chapter of Genesis. Verse 1 and 2 says, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of the country, out of thy country, and from thy kindred and from thy house, unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, he said, And I will make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make, thee, make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You see, God can only use 
each and every one of us after we leave that which is familiar to us. Paul wrote in Romans 4, 20 and 21, he staggered not the promises of God uh, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Abraham didn't let doubt control him. His doubt, his doubt was not bigger than his faith. So we've got to give honor to God and say, you know what, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Lord, help me. Lord, and sometimes we just have to pray, Lord, help thou my unbelief. Strengthen me, God, in the midst of this storm, in the midst of this situation, in the midst of this problem, whatever I'm facing right now, God, I need you to strengthen me. I'm going to operate in faith, but I'm going to put works behind it so that you can move and do that which you see fit in my life. Oh, oh God, help us today. We're going to sing something. I'm going to open these altars if you would like to come. Amen. Amen. Find a place. Amen. Even in this place, let's make this whole sanctuary a house of prayer today. Amen. If you, if you, if you got to leave, just do it quietly. But for the next few moments, why don't we come? Amen. Or find that place. Sit where you're at. Kneel where you're at. Raise your voice. Raise your hands. Amen. And let's see God do something magnificent in this place today. Can you do that today? Come on. All over this place. Reach out to the Lord today. Raise your voice. Reach out to Him. Come on. Reach out to Him today. He's here. He wants to answer your prayer. He wants to meet your need. Jesus! 